The East Coast port strike. Let's talk about it because it is important because we have seen this before where unions threatened to, to, to walk out, strike. Matter of fact, I did a video about it a year and a half ago saying you're going to start seeing strikes happen like crazy because unions are not educated economists. They don't understand how money works and how corporations make money. They just want to go after the big guys and charge you as the union member money to do it. And it's just a big scam. Honestly, there are some things that a union can do right, but by and large, it's one big money printing scheme. And they are going to co coerce a ton of people into striking, and you're going to see uh, massive brawls. We've seen it with other companies where they're just always trying to hammer out these deals. They finally get what's what they want or sort of what they want, and then what does the company do? We're firing a bunch of people. Because that's the reality of where we're at right now. Corporations are actually, they sit there and they talk about record profits, but you don't realize that those record profits are also based off of inflation. You know, there's so much going on right now um, that most people think of profits, they don't watch margin because they don't understand a balance sheet. They don't understand any of this stuff. And so they, they go blindly. Well, the port strike now, this is interesting because this will have real serious effects on the, on the population, right? We've seen it before where we saw all of the, uh, the ship shipping companies, the boats stranded or out waiting to be offloaded, uh, because of the sheer volume of stuff that was overloading those employees or their hours and things like that, they couldn't offload the boats fast enough. So there's this big roadblock. We've seen roadblocks on the Panama Canal, right? So we've seen a Los Angeles, Panama Canal. Now we're seeing this East Coast strike. And what happens is it doesn't, it's not as easy as just going, okay, it's, it's this uh, shipyard that's striking. We'll just move the ships to another shipyard. You can't do that. It's impossible. So that shipyard's already at capacity. It may be able to take one or two boats a week, whatever. That's not going to help anything right? But here's the thing. You no, know, And we're going to talk about the story out of CNBC. This is the time to be prepared. See, if you went down and bought an extra thing, I'm going to go down this week and buy a couple things of toilet paper from Costco. I know it sounds funny. That's always the first thing that goes during hyperinflation. It's just because people feel like they did something for themselves. Because they're walking out with a big armload of stuff. Um, I'm going to go buy some extra things that I would need. Why? If I don't, need it and this thing is averted and there's no problem cool no problem but if there is i'm good to go and here's the, th the funny thing either if you prepare or not the the crazy news is your necessities are going to go higher in price over the next five or six months because the federal reserve and the government is lying to you about inflation they're withholding the stuff you need so what you should do is go buy some necessities right just buy a little extra that's just common sense but in these days, common sense ain't so common. So this is out of CNBC, East Coast port strike. Truckers, rails, truckers and rail uh, companies scramble to move billions in cargo before ILA union midnight shutdown. It says here, the uh, with a potential strike at ports up and down the East Coast and along the Gulf Coast set to begin after midnight Monday, today, Logistics executives tell CNBC remaining hours are critical in moving out as much trade as possible before a shutdown that will do serious damage to the functioning of the U.S. economy. Let me stop there and say, you know, I just said I'm going to go get some toilet paper later this week. You know, even if the strike starts and all this, rah, it's going to be all over the news, you know, prices aren't going to turn around and most of the public has no concept of what's happening. They don't even watch the news. I ran into a buddy the other day. He goes, dude, honestly, I haven't even seen the news like in like three weeks. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Somebody I just met though. And, and they're just like, I, I just, you know, have me watch the news. And so you got time, you know, it's no, you don't have to panic and leave work at it early to go get some food, you know, some extra food, some necessities, things like that. You got time. And that's what most people don't realize. It's good to know what's happening currently and, and project what's coming in the future. But when you know it, what's coming in the future, you don't got a race. Uh, what happens is like what during COVID, me and my buddy, I know we had like two or three of those big things of uh, toilet paper, you know, stashed and some extra food and all that kind of stuff. And when the world was melting down and closing down, we actually went to uh, Costco and sat on the tailgate and just smiled and grinned and looked at the, so the line for actual toilet paper. No joke around the corner. It was like, it was insane. It was like 300 feet long of people wanting toilet paper. And it's just one of those examples. We're just grinning and giggling. And you're like, dude, people just have no concept. They're just late to the store or the story. It says based off data from Import Genius, which tracks the bills, bill of ladings, the digital receipts for cargo containers, a total of 54,456 20 foot equivalent units. So think about those 20 footers. 
uh, arrived on uh, the Connex boxes, whatever they're called, uh, shipping containers on Friday at the uh, at the 14 ports operating under the master contract between the International Longshoresmen Association and the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which expires at midnight tonight. The approximate value of the freight was upwards of $2.7 billion based on the MDS transmodal estimate of $50,000 per container, right? Blah, 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 blah. What is it? A bunch of big screen TVs? Alan Barr, CEO of OLULA USA, said the enormity of freight volumes arriving Friday alone shows the scramble logistics co- the scramble logistics companies are in to get the containers off the dock by close of business Monday. Are you kidding? You think the union guys are going, yeah, let's race and get this done. They're like, we got a point to prove. We need more money. But really what's going to happen is you're going to see outsourcing. It, it, it's going to be crazy. Um, importers, in coordination with their logistics partners, should try to clear as many of those containers off open terminals where possible to avoid possible delays in acquiring their inventory. On average, it takes one week to clear out one day of port closure, as much as 43% to 49% of total containerized goods entering the U.S. are processed through ports on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. So 49%, that's a big number. But I mean, you think about it, it's half the country, half the ports. Sure, it makes sense. Uh, Michael Kanko, uh, CEO of Import Genius tells CNBC the economic importance of the port's impact by the ILA strike is profound. As our data shows, a strike of even a week will block the flow of hundreds of thousands of containers into the U.S. He said, these ports are also a major gateway into the U.S. for refrigerated produce. Time isn't on the side of importers. You know, it's really sad. The truth about produce imports it makes me disgusted. You know, we could we could make most of the food that we need, right? You know, I know we're used to all these different other ethnic uh, foods that we love that are mainly grown in other countries. By and large, we can grow pretty much all of it here. But the way governments attack us and cause our prices to go up is through tariffs. And so what they do is they say, hey, um, farms, we're going to give you the option of uh, selling your stuff to other countries and you're going to get a cost benefit. And then we're going to ship in, we're going to import uh, food from other countries. So I'll give you avocados as an example. There is enough avocados to feed the entire U.S. in the central coast of California, the central valley of California, that kind of stuff. Um, But they all go to different countries where you go to your grocery store and you see avocados from Mexico. That's because then the government has the right to set a tariff on them. And it's disgusting to me. And that's a a hidden tax. It causes your food to go up. Whereas if you just bought the, the avocados from America, if we were allowed to buy them from America, but most of them get shipped off, then it it would be cheaper. I hope you got something out of this. The real big takeaway from this is just go buy some necessities. Don't worry about this. This is noise. And when the unions strike and they get more money, they'll find the layoffs coming. Robots will take over their job. It's just a fact. It's becoming more and more evident. The Economic Ninja is out.